Hello and welcome to our learning platform. Today we are going to learn about USSD and in our practical session we are going to develop a multi-level USSD application. If this is your first time checking out our videos, remember to subscribe to help us grow our learning community. Let's dive in. USSD stands for Unstructured Supplementary Service Data. It's a technology that is used by GSM mobile phones to be able to communicate with different service providers. For example, those who are offering banking services or even prepaid recharge services. It can be segmented into three major segments whereby we have the user's mobile phone, then the USSD service provider, and the web application that is handling all the queries. At the end of the practical session today, we should have developed a USSD application that works as follows. We can dial the following USSD code, star 384, Three two, three two, zero zero, hash. Then run it. Once we run this USSD code, you'll be able to see the various platforms that are there when it comes to the gadgets. And these are the software versions contained within those gadgets. For example, if we select phones as option one, we can see various platforms, Android or iPhone. Let's select Android 1 and we are offered with various Android versions. We can click Audio as option 2. Depending on the input, you'll be able to see some more information about that software version you've selected. For example, we have Android Oreo here, which is the 8th version of Android and was released on December 5 2017 that's what you are going to do from the practical session that you've just seen it's a multi-level ussd application because you can click various options that would lead you to other options that would eventually lead you to whatever you want to do let's look at how the code work is this is the code work behind the ussd application that you've just looked at it will display to the user the various options that are there and by default, the text variable is usually set to blank and that would load the main menu. This is how the main menu looks like. The user is fed with the gadget platforms, phones, desktops, and others. This would serve as the main categories. And for the main categories, you can also have some subcategories under it. And under those subcategories, you can also have other options under those subcategories. For example, we have option 1 as our main category. If the user selects 1 as their input, they'll be able to see phone platforms, Android and iPhone. Because this is business logic level 1, the user can also select Android or iPhone. If they select either of these, that would move them to business logic 2. For example, if they select 1, this is what happens. They are fed with the Android versions, that's Nougat and Oreo. If they also decide to select option 2, this is what they'll see coming soon. Apparently, we haven't fed any iPhone versions, so we can just work with Android. Under the Android versions, we also have various options. For example, if the user selects 1, that would be denoted as 1 asterisk 1 asterisk 1 meaning they've selected the first option under the first subcategory which is under the first main category one asterisk one asterisk one if the user decides to select two meaning it's the second option under the first subcategory which is under the first main category this is how multi-level ussd works we can also do the same for desktops. In our business logic, desktops are located under the second main category. So click on that. The user is fed with the desktop platforms. And the desktop platforms serve as the main category. If the user decides to select option 1, they'll be given anything or any option under the option they've selected. And if the option is 1, 
they'll be fed with the win Windows versions. If the option is 2, there's also an output there. We haven't fed any Mac options. The user can also decide to go a little bit deeper and select any version under Windows. This would be denoted as 2 asterisk 1 asterisk 1. This is what they'll see. Windows XP. If they also decide to take the second option, that is Windows 11, this is what they'll see. What this means, 2 asterisk 1 asterisk 1, it means they've selected the first option under the first subcategory, which is under the second main category. If they select 2 asterisk 1 asterisk 2, that means they've selected the second option under the first subcategory, which is located under the second main category. Don't worry if this sounds as jargon to you for the first time, but the more you do the practical sessions or the more you watch more videos, the more you'll be able to understand. We have the third option here. This is what the user will see. So far we haven't input any options under the third option, but they'll just be given an output. Suppose the user selects anything that is out of these options, the USSD application would inform them that they've had an invalid input. So basically, this is how our application works. It has the main categories under phones, desktops, and others. Under phones, you're able to see the various platforms, that's Android or iPhone. If the user selects Android, they are fed with the Android versions. And if they select any of the Android versions, they are fed with a little bit of more details pertaining the Android versions. If they also select desktops, as a multi-level USSD application, they'll be given any software or platform under desktops, that's either Windows or Mac. Then if they select Windows, they're able to see the various versions under Windows. And if they select any of the versions, for example, Windows 11, the USSD would give them a little bit more details depending on the option they've selected. Let's now push our code into production. As we said before, USSD can be partitioned into three main segments, which entails the user, the service provider, and the web application. We already have our web application, and right now we are going to host it with the service provider. In this practical session, we are using Africa Stocking as our service provider. If you already have an account on Africa Stocking, you can just click Login, which is located at the right hand side of this website, africastocking.com. If you don't have an account, you can click on register, then fill the details as first name, last name, your email address and your password, your country and agree to the terms of service. But if you already have an account, depending on whether you created with GitHub or Google or just the email address, you can also proceed to login. After you've logged in, you'll see this interface. Just click on go to sandbox because we are going to test our applications in the test bed that is offered by Africa Stocking. After you successfully logged in, this is the kind of interface you'll see. Click go to sandbox, that is where we are going to test our application. There are various services that are offered by Africa Stocking. In this practical session, we are only interested with USSD, so click on USSD. Then service codes. A service code can be dedicated or shared depending on what you choose. But before you use any of the service codes on the test bed or the sandbox, you need to create a channel. A channel entails the service code and a callback URL. A callback URL is where your code is hosted. It could be a link where your web application is hosted. So each and every time a user makes or dials the USSD code to make a request for a certain service, Africa Stocking will receive that request on your behalf and redirect the user to your web application. Let's create a channel. Click on create channel. A channel must be unique. You can pick any unique numbers, but in this case, I'll just use 32 32 specify the callback URL it could be anything depending on where you've hosted your code 
So paste that link there. I'll paste my callback URL. Fix my callback URL, then create channel. I've successfully created my channel and because I've hosted my web application, I'll just go test it in the simulator. There are various ways in which you can have your code tested because this is a test bed. You can either download the Africa Stocking Android application from Google Play Store or you use the simulator. For this session, you'll just use the simulator. It is located as the second last option on the left navigation bar. Click on Launch Simulator. Once the simulator has loaded, you'll be notified to input your phone number. Input your phone number. Then click Connect. Africa Stocking will offer you a dial pad, as you can see. You can proceed to type the USSD code 384 323200 Then hash Dial the USSD code Good Our USSD code has loaded successfully What this means When a user dials the USSD code Africa Stocking receives that request and because you specified where that request should go to in the callback url it will locate your web application whatever is contained within your web application is what will be displayed to the user our web application entails gadget platforms we can select on any let's do option two and the user is offered with various options that are available there because this is a multi-level USSD application, you can proceed and select option 1. Once this is done, there's a dial icon on the bottom left. Click on it. That is what is displayed when you select option 1. We can also choose to run another station. Okay. This time around, we can use fonts. select Android under Android versions we can take option 1 once you select one that is the feedback you get developing a multi-level USSD application is as simple as that in the next videos we are going to see how to link a USSD application to a database Always remember to subscribe and support our learning community by sharing our content to your friends or liking or even leaving a comment on what you would want us to do in our next video. See you then.